recording. Boom. What's up, everyone? Friedman Fendazin here from Holistic Songwriting, and welcome. I'm here in Cologne with Normandy, or half of Normandy, I should say, and we're going to talk about their song, White Flag, and oh, yeah. how it came about. <laughs> Is the creation of White Flag, is that kind of indicative of how you write your songs generally or was that like a really a special case? It happened in a weird way. So usually we start off with like production as in drums. Maybe like a synth idea or something. The whole song just came about in three minutes straight away. All the melodies, everything was in one recording, which was an amazing experience. Tell me you see it. So that was the first verse idea that we had. Does everything happen together with you guys organically? Everything happens in the studio when Philip is there. <laughs> we work in, a, in different studios, so we have a lot of opportunities. Like a schedule of meeting up every Thursday, but it's all like ideas that comes from just me going like, oh, 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 oh. you know. <laughs> this is hell, ashes of a fantasy. We were chasing down a dream, but now I'm waving a white flag. So if you let it rest in peace, let it be just a fading melody in your head. Cause I am waving a white flag. When you write, do you write on, on guitar, I presume? Or do you write on anything that just kind of happens to be there? It's actually mostly keys. And that way you you don't have to let the melody interfere with uh, all the cool riffs and everything. <laughs> If we have the same routine every single time, we're just gonna end up in the same patterns. The song has been written from one like pad loop, like dee -dee 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 -dee. all like different ways of doing it. What at the end of the day kind of makes it all the Normandy sound? The songs rarely lack melodies in any place. So it doesn't matter if there's like a breakdown or a chorus, obviously. There is melodies everywhere. Most of the time they intervene and like they work well together or we focus on one melody and make that pop out. The really melodic side of it has to speak for the Normandy sound. And is that something that you generally have nailed down before you go into the other elements of the music? The, is the melody? It's 50-50 kind of. Some songs are on the new album, doesn't have any chorus yet, but it's a, you can hear the melodies throughout the tracks for all the other instruments. So it's a really interesting demo, but it just needs that little sauce on top. Mm -hmm. which is the vocal line. Sometimes you write the melody and, and that will inform what the music will do and other times you write the music and that informs mm -hmm. the melody. And they can also like destroy each other. So let's say one of the new songs has a really cool chorus with a big string pattern. Let's say I write a killer hook on that, that might end up removing the strings actually to move more place for the vocal line to be there. You've been attached to that string pattern for so long and then the only way to write the chorus is to take it away and boom, there's a new chorus. So yeah, that happens all the time. But when you write on, on, on the piano, what does that look like typically? Do you start with the chords or do you start with a melody and harmonize that? I'm a very basic pianist, so I write everything in C. So let's say I'm using a contact instrument like a Alicia's keys or whatever. I do the transposing there to find the key that it sounds most interesting. And what do you mean by most interesting? Like, what are you looking for specifically? I guess you gotta be real honest from the beginning. Like, if the song is gonna be um, very mysterious and intriguing song and then you can't have the most simplest idea on top of that you gotta have something that draws people in and then another song like keep fucking it up from the new album we had is like you just want to have the most uplifting melody that you can find you could paint the picture with a melody and no matter the language you can hear if it's sad hateful or like happy or whatever <laughs>
make sure we find the correct key for the song. If it's hurting, like the lyrics hurt, then the vocals gotta hurt, then the guitar maybe has to have some kind of honesty and not being played perfectly, you know what I mean? Like s small details. How much of does music theory come into play? Songwriting theory is a different thing than music theory. So songwriting theory is really important for me. When it comes to music theory, I don't really go fuck. It's more like what chords and what melodies attach themselves to each other. So you gotta find the pattern for the song that feels right. And do you sing during that process already? Uh, yeah, I sing from the very start, I'd say. Because some of the melodies I can't play with my hands. It's like adding colors to the chords before the chords are actually colored by my hands. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of help with my voice. It could be like a stairway down, so I'm like ba -da 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 -boo -do -do. But the, the thing is, if I would have just taken those chords, it would have been just boom, boom. Because the chords will probably never be interesting enough, but it's how you involve the melody into that. So I think it's very important for me to have some kind of uh, knowing of how the melody might go when I write the chords first. When do the, the lyrics come in? The lyrics always comes last. For some reason, I think the melodies and like the song speaks more than the lyrics to me. So I don't want to force any lyrics in from the start. I want to make sure that the melody speaks to me first. This is So I let the lyrics come in last, but the vowels come in very early though. For a song that we have for the new album called Jericho, I started singing, let it go, let it go. It felt like a big march song. It's like everything is marching, whatever. Jericho is from the Bible, it's like a city in the Bible, but it, that fit way more. So I just take the same vowels and disconnect it and connect it again. So that happens like all the time. I don't think about it too much when I write the melodies. I just make sure the melodies comes out and then you can transpose it afterwards. Let me show you what you're hiding from. We had a piano following all this, so you get this mystical. Let me show you what you're hiding in the night. And this is all from the spot, so like yeah. this is, which you can hear. So we wrote the song in a bass, we recorded that bass at the same time I was recording on my phone to make sure the whole arrangement is there. And then I recorded vocals on top of that and we felt like it was too low, so we brought it up. And you know the falsetto, Hall can actually argue that we should really push that and like, ah. I was like, no, it's, I don't know, because then the final note, it doesn't become as, as hard. And like as cool. The contrast is really the nice. contrast is important. So I, I had to fight him a bit on that, but it turned out good. I won. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be a falsetto, but as soon as we hit the falsetto, I, I just felt it was the right. Thing. And that last note as well in the song, where you like slide up into that yeah. really high note. That was just something we just wanted a big finish. The reception of that song from the fans have been, well, oh, the note at the end, holy shit, that kind of thing. But when we wrote it, we just needed a way to finish the song. When do you come in? At what point? And what do you bring to the to the sound? So I come in when the song is like, I would say 90% finished. We have written like MIDI drums. Philip does it almost every time. And then I just listen to the song a bunch of times and then we just start like doing some takes. For White Flag, I think I didn't change too much. We build it very mechanically, but it's very organic when it comes out. So it's all like, well, you're not stuck to ideas. No. You, you can, so with me, with melodies, I hate rewriting melodies because I'm stuck. I'm like, they're my babies now. But with drums, you could just redo anything at any point. And I need to be better at that. <laughs> the beat has to be very melodic in a way too. So like with White Flag, we had the ba 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 and then the other time is ba 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 so it's like the whole rhythmic of that chorus actually has its own type of melody You do your own uh, backing vocals, I guess? We've been, we've been talking a bunch of times about like having 
other singers but the thing is i am hawkan can sing and he did on our live session we did for white flag and it sounded good so i don't know why he hasn't so far but i've done all of it so far i always dub them left right i quadruple track sometimes too depending on like the chorus or not and where do those copies go in terms of the panning Always left, right, 100%. Always do like a falsetto on top. I always do like a bottom. So it, most of the times the main melody has like six stops. Can we go through those one more time? I triple track the original key of the, like the full power thingy. And then after that, I usually go falsetto. And that's same octave, octave higher? Octave higher, mm -hmm. um, unless it's like really high. <laughs> then I just go the same because it adds breathiness because my vocals is kind of, they're kind of harsh and sometimes the song shouldn't feel broken like my vocal can sound broken and sometimes you just need that flat perfect breathy melody but in the same key so i do falsettos left right and then i do the low always low left right sometimes i have one in the center as well and then harmonies i usually go for like three or no two harmonies and they're all double tracked so it's four tracks of harmonies all left right but the thing is afterwards i could slap a chorus on the whole group and that's gonna make it go anywhere or if i slap a, a room reverb on the bus it's gonna be all over the whole spectrum the panning spectrum i just like them to get out of the way from the main vocals so it can sound like it's very fragile in the center but I just make sure that the fragileness and like the hurtfulness and the lyrics and everything that comes down to the center vocals so that it's that it's details. alone yeah that you can hear all the details i guess it's like soundscaping but it's also just filling up the spectrum with vocals is very powerful instead of just having like drums guitar bass and a synth <laughs> I just have one more question. Yeah. Um, so when you're thinking about those harmonies, so doubles basically that are, that are not the same pitch as the main vocal, mm -hmm. I should say, when do you use them? I treat my harmonies exactly like I treat a string quartet. So if you have like the main melody and you have the chorus behind that, I don't necessarily go for the th third and the fifth. I go for something that makes it like hurt a little bit. Maybe I go for the suspended four, the twos, or maybe I'll go for a major if it would fit the track. So if I'm singing in a verse, I'll have four harmonies coming in as a group, but in a huge reverb. It's like with strings, really. I, I don't treat them as harmonies in the same way. So when you listen to my vocal, um, the whole package of vocals that I have, you won't even know what chord it is sometimes because it's so many weird colorings that would fit any, any chord. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me. I thank really you. enjoyed this, really thank learned you. a lot. Thank, thank you so you. much. Say stay gefährlich. Bye. Bye.